what I'd like to do today is give you a perspective on diversity and inclusion that includes Hispanics. So we as CCOs run organizations and sometimes those organizations are very large. So I'd like to give you some ideas today on how to think more broadly about including diversity and inclusion with Hispanics, not only in your companies, but in your organizations as well. And the way I wanna do this is I, I wanna give you sort of an inside out view of uh, Hispanics who are really missing in many of the discussions on diversity and inclusion. But before I do that, I want to just give you a little slice of my story and why I'm able to talk to you about this from the inside out. Um, I grew up in a Hispanic household and we used to go to Mexico quite a bit. So even though I'm an American citizen, it was often challenging crossing the border. And when we would cross the border, I was about eight years old when this particular incident happened we would usually go through the Nogales, Mexico border from Mexico back into the United States. And one time on one of those trips, we were stopped by a border guard who asked my mother and my father several questions. And then he looked in the back seat of the car and saw this, which is me, and he started asking me questions. And he wanted to know where I was from. And my mother answered him every question that he had. And he snapped at her at one point and said, I didn't ask you, I asked her. And he got real frustrated. And he said, I'm gonna ask one more time. And I remember a few years earlier, my mother saying to me, if we ever get separated at the border, or if we ever get stopped, run as fast as you can across the border to the US side, and we'll meet up back there. So at that moment, when that border guard was staring at me, my heart was pounding because I knew it was gonna be one of those moments where I would have to run and run fast. And then he said to me, where are you from? And I said, Olympia, Washington in perfect English. And he waved our car through. So this is an example of what some Mexican Americans go through on a daily basis. Just either whether you're working and living in the US working in Mexico or vice versa in other countries as well. So what I'd like to do is segue from that to talk to you about a growing market and workforce, and that is those that include Hispanics. Over um, the last couple of years, it's been known that Hispanics are going to make up 1.8 billion, sorry, trillion with a T, um, in purchasing power. So if you think about just the next 18 months, this segment alone is going to make up 1.8 trillion in purchasing power. Also the demographic is 1.1 in four millennials are Hispanics. And 52% of the US population that are Hispanics are under the age of 30. That's an important demographic. And then if you look at the number of Hispanics in the US, it's nearly 30%. It's the largest minority in the US. And over the last 30 years, 52% of the US Hispanic, or sorry, 52% of the US population growth has come from Hispanics. And only Mexico has a higher Hispanic population than the US. So within the next five years, or shorter than five years, we will comprise nearly 30% of the population. An organization called Research Now did an online survey of 602 US workers of Hispanic descent. They're ages 18 to 53. And here's what they found. 71% describe work as a major source of personal pride. In fact, many identify with their work and their roles at work. And 75% describe it as how they're gonna get ahead in life and how they're gonna take care of their families. They take a lot of pride in this. 
This is really important if you think about in 2050, the US population, half of the US population will be Hispanic people. Now let's talk about Hollywood because Hollywood is a reflection of society, right? Well, not always. If you look at the demographics in Hollywood, there was um, a survey, it's actually an initiative done by the uh, USC Annenberg School called the Inclusive Initiative. And what they found was that Latino actors represented only 3% of lead or co-lead roles in the top segment. And not surprisingly, producers, the casting executives, all of those folks were really underrepresented as well. So when they were actually cast, they were cast as poor, isolated, or criminals. Not necessarily how you wanna be seen. But surprisingly, you've got nearly 50,000 roles over the last 10 years, and Hispanics only represented 4.5% of them. So what does this say? You know, we really need to cast reality. American media should reflect society and Hollywood is a really good place to start. Let's go back to the numbers. I mentioned that 52% of the population growth of the US has come from Hispanic people. In a few years, we'll represent 28% of the total population. However, according to Pew, only 14% of US hiring are Hispanic people. And a very large percentage see their work as, as a personal pride. And I can tell you that Hispanic people are incredibly loyal. They're not only loyal to their families, but they're loyal to the companies they work for. So as CCOs, there are things that you can do. You can expand the thinking about how to include Hispanics in your company. Use your role to change and broaden the thinking, especially as you're looking at the fiscal, the fiscal budget year. Many of us are going through that right now in October. So we're doing all of our financial planning for the year ahead. So as you sit on your leadership teams, bring this up to think more about hiring Hispanics into the overall budget and the overall company. And then apply your insight to decision-making frameworks to not only include Hispanics, but people who are different. So Harvard did a study and they came to the conclusion that we are hardwired to wanna to surround ourselves and be around people who are like us. So if you're non-Hispanic, you need to think about this. You need to think about how there may be biases, unconscious biases, in the hiring process? And how can you build out a framework that makes it so that other people who are different than you can get into the, into the process? And then we need to develop diversity and inclusion action plans, not only for our organizations, but for our companies. Because of the role we play on the senior leadership team of our companies, we have influence over how they think about not our, only the culture of our companies, but how we're adding to that. And think about all the demographics that I just shared with you. This will be, be an important part of not only strengthening your company's position if you're marketing to, but also including Hispanics in your organization's um, hiring process. The real key here for us as CCOs is to mentor and hire people who are different than us. This is really something we have to think about. When we mentor and hire people who are different than us, not only are we working to solve the diversity inclusion issue, but we're also working to include more Hispanics. And when we do that, we get an organization that is not only diverse, but helps us think about our business in very different ways, much stronger ways. So we like to say gracias por escuchar. Thank you for listening.
This is a very important demographic. When you think about building out your personal teams and your company's teams, expand the thinking to include Hispanics.